Uh, so next up, we have our next talk by ZX. Uh, ZX leads uh, the Crypto Econ Lab and drives the Falcoin uh, ecosystem growth at Protocol Labs. Um, he'll be talking about bridging the uh, Falcoin, bridging with Falcoin, um, and just uh, the new frontiers in Web3. Uh, this is a talk that uh, I've had a, a sneak peek into, so I'm super excited about it. So without further ado, I'll uh, welcome him on stage and uh, I'll let him kick off with the talk. Great, thank you, Kadek. Um, just give me one moment. Everything is great. All right, thank you. Hi, everyone. Welcome to HackFS Storage Provider Summit. My name is ZX. I work on um, crypto economics lab and ecosystem growth at Protocol Labs. Today, I'm very excited to talk about um, Bridge with Filecoin, New Frontiers in Web3. And I think we, we really represent a lot of tremendous um, growth and building opportunities for both lab builders and, and entrepreneurs in the ecosystem. Um, and then HackFS is the perfect place to, uh, to get started. And then like, I'm pretty sure our ideas and venture does not end here. There's lots of amazing program like the accelerator program that we just saw uh, really help us take uh, our ideas and businesses to the next level. Great, let's get started. Let's do a recap. What is Filecoin? Um, this is, a, uh, this is the uh, island economy analogy that we often use, right? So Filecoin is like an island. On the island, there are different kinds of participants. You have researchers building the protocol and the algorithms. You, then you have developers building tooling, experiences, application and products, or even layer two protocols. And then you have token holders providing liquidity um, and facilitating transactions uh, or providing collateral. And then you have miners amassing all these physical and capital resources to produce uh, storage related goods and services. And then we exchange that with uh, storage clients through Filecoin. And the overall goal of everyone in the ecosystem is to really bring in uh, more participants and use cases and clients into the network. And there are many lenses to look at Filecoin just like any other blockchain network. It's a utility token. It's a platform, a protocol, a blockchain network, a community and economy ecosystem and an evolutionary system. And we are, there are different stages to the economy. So we are kind of moved past the capacity building stage. Uh, we're now coming close to nine exabyte of storage with 50 petabyte coming online every single day. Um, and uh, there's some very recent upgrade that really lower, uh, that makes the chain more scalable and really lower the transaction cost and, and kind of increase the transaction throughput of the Filecoin uh, network. And that, that paves the way for more adoption, more application, more deals, uh, more transaction on the Falcon network. And I think the collective goal of everyone is to really bring us to this um, so-called stage three, where we have a really strong brand around Falcon, a full serial product, very diverse market. We think of Falcon as an Airbnb for cloud services. Um, and then like Falcon itself can be a, a sustainable economy. And so Falcon as a layer one is really unique, right? It's unique in the sense that it's, um, it's well positioned to support both Web2 and Web3 use cases. And then we will explore more of these later today. Um, so today's talk, we talk about bridging with Filecoin. So a lot of that really is like building bridges uh, to really use the storage, um, use all this, tap into the potential, tap into the compute, tap into all these um, different, um, different aspects of the Falcon protocol because it's a Falcon, because Falcon is a layer one protocol. So it cares about the very basic thing, which is, um, is the miner, are the miners storing your data? Good. And then do you have periodic proof that they are storing it? So then you saw people building bridges in various form with like different ecosystems uh, or with like different web two companies and industries. And these are not just the traditional like token bridges that we might be familiar with in web three. I think these are storage bridges, data bridges and value bridges. So, and also just to talk about some of the web two opportunities when using storage on, on Filecoin, um, because Falcon is a protocol, it's, it's, it's somewhat different from like a traditional web to a product where you expect to see like one way of how things work, right? Storage is provided uh, on Filecoin in the form of sectors, right? Like uh, it gets proven, uh, the protocol checks on it every 24 hours. And then using storage on Falcon really is to use the storage provided by storage providers on the Falcon network. So all sort of features are all possible like redundancy, encryption, indexing, fast retrieval. Many teams are building on better indexing um, um, to enable fast retrieval services. And then Falcon is a layer one. So it's designed to be to enable emergence. So there's lots of room for layer two uh, protocols that can emerge on Falcon. And while the cost of storage is very competitive today on Filecoin. Many miners are offering free storage, uh, free storage for clients. Some are even offering like negative prices. 
Um, but Falcon Storage is not just about cost, right? Just like Airbnb for cloud services should be about the experience. And we will talk a lot more about that. So there are many examples of like kind of abstract bridges of like application that makes uh, using storage on Falcon easy, right? You have NFT.storage, Chainsafe files. There's also a textile bucket, uh, Web2.storage, Astery. Many of these tools are popping up. I encourage you guys to try it out during the hackathon and build amazing product and experience with it. And uh, another big opportunity here would be like client miner. Right now, there are close to 3,000 uh, storage providers on the Falcon network, right? As a client coming to the protocol, uh, which one which one do we choose, right? Like, so there's lots of um, room here of improving the UX of the clients. I think some of the tools that I mentioned earlier are great examples. And then there's also space for like deal matching platform, kind of like Airbnbs or Dropboxes on the Falcon network. And we started to see many of these uh, emerging. And then like reputation system will come into key. And then that will also extend into like credit and other ratings. And then that also give us the opportunity to define grades of storage services which is then become a precursor to commoditize cloud storage, which is something that we have never really done before. And we talk about DeFi a lot, but it's also entirely possible to have exchanges, whether it's centralized or decentralized, or even new form of exchanges based on new structures uh, on cloud services. And as we mentioned, like there's lots of compute, GPU sitting around storage. Um, this co-location of storage and, com and compute represent tremendous opportunities. I think we hear uh, from one of the large storage providers later today to talk about um, different opportunities at uh, us, the Falcon storage providers. And then you can run analytics, algorithms, and then offer stock GPU as a service. We all know that the metaverse will likely require lots of both storage and compute resources. The Falcon network will be a perfect place for that. And then like people also researching and building caching and retrieval services. Um, there's also, given that you need like uh, collateral for uh, file, uh, to become a storage provider on Filecoin, there's also token price volatility, which doesn't have to be borne by either the miners or the client. There's actually lots of opportunity for financial services on Filecoin. It'd be really useful to help with like managing risk, providing liquidity and reducing uncertainty. And then everyone can benefit with a more predictable um, kind of financial situation. And then data services will become increasingly important as the level of activities uh, in, increases on Filecoin. When you understand what's the risk profile, uh, both for the storage and the storage provider and the clients, and then that, like, that enable participants to make more informed decisions. We start to see like mining return calculators, uh, more and more sophisticated um, analytics with lenders and strong network analytics really paved the way for more sophisticated products on Filecoin. So we talk a lot about like Web2 style interactions. I also want to emphasize Falcon really brings a unique and new building block to Web3. And we use this like diagram to really illustrate, right? We call that the dataverse. And this is what we call like a data supply chain. It's very common in Web2 world, right? You have like production of data. Many times um, this data are actually public, right? Then you have refinery. Um, can you mine inside? Can you clean up the data? And then you do curation. We package that in the format that people uh, want and then deliver value or satisfy some kind of desire, right? And then you generate value and then potentially attribution, except that in the traditional Web2 world, many of the attribution really happen in the last stage, right? But in the case of like Web3, you really have this network structure. And I think this is where the whole content address web of IPFS really come in. You have this network of nodes and edges. How do you define them? That is like, a full on protocol of defining what is the what is an edge. And there's lots of research on this uh, from the traditional network science literature. Um, but IPFS later gives you this network structure and enable us to define the structure over it. And then the, what the Falcon layer really brings to the table, I think one is huge volume, very cheap supply of storage. Um, but as we already know, it's not just about price. So it's really about that experience and the value. And the next piece is this periodic proof about the data being stored on Filecoin. And then before Falcon gets an EVM or user-defined uh, smart contract system, there's lots of bridging layer, which is the main thing of our talk today. And then we, we will see a few more examples. And they enable others to build smart contract layer uh, logic on top of this, um, on top of the Filecoin uh, storage network. And there's we already started to see people experimenting with this, but I think um, I will go over some of the example of like some of the other Web3 successes and how do we really crack this and how do we really showcase the immense potential at the intersection of Filecoin and Ethereum or other smart contract platforms. So going back to this again, right? So these are not just the regular token bridges. This is something that the world has not even seen. 
uh, we have not fully appreciated the potential and the power of these storage bridges. So these are not just like token, they could be storage, value, data, attribution, flow. It could really be anything. The sky is the limit and HackFX is a perfect uh, venue to really explore, build teams and kind of like try it out, um, really experiment what could be possible. Many of the many of the successes in Web3 started in hackathons like this one. So yeah, so some of the other uh, announcement or, or kind of like progress being made with these bridges like Filecoin Chaining Bridge, Filecoin Ethereum Bridge, Filecoin Near Bridge. Uh, there's also free storage on the Near Bridge. And um, and more recently, we there's all, lots of joint grants. I think we hear from uh, Mosh later on to talk about these exciting grant opportunities. And then there's uh, different kinds of bridges with like Polygon, uh, Near Hedera, and lots of um, lots of ecosystem momentum really kind of enable experimentation, empower this kind of trial and error to figure out what is the right use case. And then we talk a bit more about some of the use cases, but before that, let's just take a look, uh, take a step back and look at like DeFi and NFT, some of the successful case study in Web3. So back in 2015, when Ethereum first came up, right, like people talk about like smart contract, but it took us a long time to figure out what is the product market fit? What can we really do with it that can really um, satisfy like consumer and, uh, and, cu and customer demand? Um, and there were many that back in 2017, I remember pretty vividly. I also made a few of those, but they didn't make it, right? Like um, I think one strong thing with DeFi is we really leverage the building block that Ethereum brings to the table. It really didn't really go too far into like interfacing the real world. It really is like, simple uh, mathematic calculations that you can perform on Ethereum, right? And then like, and then there are many protocols that's being built on top of the underlying layer one, the composable building block that enable even more uh, emergence. So um, some, of the, some of the takeaway here potentially would be like, well, wow, some simple operation that cannot be enabled by this entirely new building block that is introduced by Filecoin. And then we look at NFT. NFT was also a concept for a while. And then people kind of like saw the need for it, but like it really, and people define a standard of what is an NFT. So that's ERC721, but they didn't really take off until like CryptoKitties, uh, which I believe that was in ETH Denver. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe that's in ETH Denver. They really showcased the immense potential. Mm -hmm. What can we do? Uh, sorry, got it? Uh, ETH Waterloo. Oh, Waterloo, that's right, that's right. Um, thank you. So like CryptoKitties really demonstrate what is possible with like NFTs. And then we see like lots of companies and really building. And then now we saw this NFT summer. So uh, some takeaway here will be the like, importance of defining a standard, having refer reference implementation or uh, concept will go a very long way. And then we still need to find product market fit for whatever we are building, whether it's a protocol, a marketplace or a platform or an application. So just some more uh, Web3 ideas that will be part that's, that are enabled by Filecoin. I think uh, we talked about this on our previous talk. Um, just going over them again, we have data bounties where we have smart contract pulling together funds for storage of for the storage of a particular CID, right? It could be a collection of NFTs, it could be some data sets, and then this fund only pay out when there's a proof that it has been stored on Filecoin. Last I heard, this has already been implemented. I think that like maybe we can take this um, hackathon as an opportunity to really figure out what are some interesting games or like that that we can develop uh, on top of this. And data DAOs, right? DAOs cannot be formed as a building, a building up of data, building up on data bounties. DAOs cannot be formed around data that the community cares about, right? People can join and uh, join this DAO by having proven that they store a piece through Filecoin and through all these bridges, right? Or they could just contribute to the pool, right? And then on top of that, you have storage insurance, commodity futures, a miner who are incentivized to repair data if, let's say, the Falcon protocol reports that, oh, this data, this piece of data is missing. Now you have a bounty to fix those, or like there will be penalty uh, or already on the Falcon protocol if the miner is not storing it. And then we talk a lot about NFTs, right? Like I think we 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 celebrated NFT, but we also noticed there are many areas of improvement. And I think one one obvious one would be like, um, can we really redesign, rethink the flow of NFT and what is the value proposition, value attribution, right? Like because I think the metaverse should be open and then it should be, and the really the value is really in the contents, right? So there is lots of room here to really rethink about what is the economics, what is the future that we want to see. And then we leverage unit building blocks on Falcon to define new protocols. And as mentioned earlier, we talk about what is the no ways and edge, right? And and really defining those, even, even in NFT setting, right? What is a no, what is an edge, right? Potentially, uh, let's say I 
I uh, merge two NFTs to create a new one, that inherently there is a relationship, right? How can we really think through about value attribution and make that in a more transparent and a fairer way to really enable a greater community um, um, and a greater economy? And uh, verifiable computes, right? Um, CID, which is a unique identifier of the content on Filecoin, they can be a binary of an algorithm, right? Um, you can also store that on Filecoin. In that sense, you can do, you can verify compute uh, based on the algorithm and based on the input data. When you have compute and data, you get more data. So that create a very interesting uh, self-reinforcing loop. And I think like, lastly, I think there's lots of room for layer two protocols on Filecoin. You really leverage this guarantee, this like basic building block that the protocol provides, right? You can build multiple perpetual storage protocols on Filecoin, pay one swap forever, you can see like maybe 10 of this on Filecoin, content delivery protocols. You can also see many of this on Filecoin. And another observation here is when you look at all these like uh, web two platforms, right? Like when they first started out, user have a really strong incentive to, uh, to use the platform, upload data, to use the storage, right? Like can we think about more creative incentive uh, for client to use Filecoin, to use web three, to really bring their, um, their digital existence onto the web three infrastructure. So with that in mind, Falcon really is an exponentially growing ecosystem and many of um, teams come into our ecosystem through the previous iteration of HackFS. So I'm very excited for ha uh, HackFS this time around as well. Um, and as we really, as we participate in the hackathon, we think about what new interaction can we enable? What kind of businesses are we building and how can we find product market fit? And to recap, Falcon is really uniquely positioned um, there's immense opportunities building layer two protocols, platforms and product on Filecoin. And we should constantly think about the business model. And there are many, many areas as we lay out that we can explore together as a community. And with that, I would like to um, pass on the time back to Kartik. Thank you for an uh, excellent presentation. Uh, there was a lot of information and I, I know everyone's gonna take some time to digest that. Given that we are a little short on time, I wanna uh, remind people to continue the conversation in Discord, um, if that's a good place for them to reach you. I know, I know we're really excited to get uh, the conversation underway.